Hello everyone, welcome back to the Classic Companions of Baldur's Gate 3 series, and today we're going to be taking a look at the ladies man of Baldur's Gate 2, a fella who was a tiefling before tieflings were really any popular to begin with, known simply as Air Delete, the second coolest bard in the entire Baldur's Gate series for sure. If you're wondering who the uh, first coolest bard is, well, um, you know, just uh, watch my let's play and take a look at that main character. <laughs> anyway, uh, shameless plugging aside, of course, this is Eric Lee. I didn't really wind up using him all that much in my playthrough, but regardless, he is a cool character and probably one of the most interesting simply because he managed to predate what would essentially become one of, if not the most popular races of choice in 5th edition, and what's even funnier about the guy is that if you look at his original portrait, you would think that tieflings were really nothing more than an elf and sub-race, because back then they didn't have horns! I could see. Um, but yeah, aside from that, though, he did have some other uh, very interesting things about him, but to start off with, he was, of course, a tiefling bard, the only one of his kind, and he used the blade kit, and the blade kit is essentially more of an offensive minded uh, bard that uh, focuses a bit more on martial combat. Not necessarily a fire replacement, but if you build them up right, they can be pretty darn scary good. He can be recruited as early as Chapter 2, and he is involved in a couple of uh, side quests, recruitment quests in particular, that I managed to do in my uh, playthrough. Uh, ability score-wise, we are looking at a strength of 17, a dexterity of 17, a constitution of 9, an intelligence of 15, a wisdom of 13, and a charisma of 16. The guy is uh, very shrewd, you know, very uh, popular among his theatrical peers, and you know, he's kind of fun to be around. Um, but in addition to his uh, typical traits of He's really good with swords, long sword and short sword, of course. And he even manages to put two skill points into each of them, which is something only the blade can do. He also has very uh, he also has resistances to various uh, physical damage types. He's fifty percent resistance to cold, twenty five percent resistance to fire, twenty five percent resistance to electricity, and fifteen percent resistance to resistant to physical damage, so that's pretty darn amazing. Um, he also has a couple of exclusive swords that he uses, and Michael Bell provided his voice. And as far as his character goes, just, again, one of the... I mean, he's... he's he was part of the theater troupe before he was captured by someone, and, I mean, he is as theatrical as any character can get. I mean... The world is a stage to him, and it's just, <laughs> he's definitely the more flowery type of character. I mean, he could he could have easily been uh, the Forgotten Realms uh, stand-in for Shakespeare, but they just decided <laughs> to make him a uh, bard. And, and of course, uh, when you start out, you, you do have to rescue him, um, which, you know, the timing couldn't be better because of... The troop is trying to put on a play, and their stand-in actor is just horrible. But you have to uh, free Erdely from imprisonment, um, imprisonment by an evil wizard called Mekra. And then, after that happens, some interplanar bounty hunters come in and uh, yoink him and Rayless away. And so you have to get him back from a planar prison, which is just, I mean, my god. <laughs> I mean, I know men have to be the damsel in distress sometimes, but that is just crazy. Um, and then in addition to that, um, he is dateable by, uh, let's see, um, no, actually, no, he's not dateable. Uh, however, he will date Eri, the elf, the Avariel, if your, uh, male protagonist doesn't go after Eri, which is really kind of cool. I mean... You know, it's not every day you see uh, an NPC companion go after another NPC companion in terms of uh, relationships. I mean, the only other time I remember seeing it was in Dragon Age 2. And it's just, it's kind of a really cool thing because, you know, it gives 
in an NPC companion is a bit more life of their own. It's definitely a lot of fun. Um, now, on to his biography. Um, when asked about his past, Erdely states that he is from the city of Sigil, a nexus of the plains and the ever-changing domain of the Lady of Pain. The city of Sigil, huh? Hmm, I wonder where else we've seen that city. He claims he cannot explain it better than that, as the planners defy description by their very nature. Erdely traveled with a troop of players, chiefly as a plain-touched heritage like he, and they put on masterful productions to amuse both Cambion and Common Burke alike. An indiscretion led the, tr the troop fleeing to the Prime Material Plane, here, which didn't bother Erdely much. He says that he is a Doom Guard, believing in the inevitable decay of all things to make way for the new. The troop has divided, but the Tiefling Bard is confident that new experience can only come of it. Uh, I'll tell you right now, trying to manage a playhouse is definitely a new experience for sure. Um, but, and the only other notable thing about him is that he actually has... <laughs> this is... Oh, you know, like, they, they got the, uh... They got the uh, entire list right in front of me. Uh, he refers to his companions by various, uh, nicknames that relate to animals. More often than not, birds! I'm not even kidding. He calls himself Sparrow. Uh, car name, I'm guessing that's you. He calls you the Raven. Airy is a dove. Animan is a hound. Cern is a swallow. Dorn is a vulture. Uh, Edwin is a sparrowhawk. I what the difference between a sparrow and a sparrowhawk is. Hexat is a dark slash ebony dove. Keldorn is a faithful slash aging slash noble hound. Corgan is a hound slash dog of war. He uses hound too much. Mazzy is a tiny falcon or a little hawk. Minsk is a hound and hipster. Nalia is a loon or lark. Mira is Mira is a duck. He called, he references it jokingly, but honestly, I, I take it unironically. Rasad is an owl. Sarabok is a fierce hound. Why? Why is every fighter a hound? Valigar is a dark hawk. Faconia is a blackbird, and Yoshimo is a blood hound or parrot. Very, very, very clever. Yes, you can definitely tell that this guy kind of lives in a world of his own for sure. But all the same, he is a really cool character. And, you know, I don't really use other bards much, especially if I use my own. Because in 2nd edition, they're kind of limited in overall usefulness. But that doesn't mean they're not fun to have. And I can't help but get the feeling that a playthrough with Eridale would definitely be a fun experience, for sure. And the idea of him being amongst good and evil characters alike is certainly an interesting choice. In fact... He's actually chaotic neutral in his alignment, which I forgot to mention, so he can get along with pretty much anybody. Okay, now, as far as this game goes, Origin Custom, Race Tiefling. Yes, we're finally doing a Tiefling. Woohoo! And as far as the sub race, you know, it's kind of a tough call. I mean, Bards have been magical since the Enhanced Edition came in for the older games, and so it doesn't surprise me that, um,. Um, a piece of Bailey's team thing kind of came up to me. However, I think with him being a blade in the older game, uh, a Zarya choice isn't, uh, bad at all, really. Um, the only problem, though, is he gets style maturity for his cantrip, which really doesn't do much for his, you know. So for me, I, it's just kind of like, honestly, any anything will do, you know. It, it's just, just choose whatever you want. It's not like he really falls in line with their evil nature anyway. In fact, I would say Mephistopheles is probably the least compatible just because uh, <laughs> he's an arch devil. But, ultimately, because it's pretty clear that this game has you using devils for bloodlines, I mean, there's not really much you can do about that, so. Uh, class bard. Archetype, I would definitely go College of Swords for sure. Uh, definitely something that's more melee focused, um, especially since the blade had some really cool melee-focused abilities that they even talk about. Um, the offensive spin was essentially a pseudo-haste effect that allowed them to fight much more quickly, and then they even had a defensive spin, which rooted them in place, unfortunately, but it jacked up their armor class like crazy, so if you use that properly, you could definitely make him a surprisingly good wall. 
Uh, spells don't matter, instruments don't matter. Background, entertainer, of course. I mean, he works in a team. Ability-wise, it was kind of hard to kind of match his old abilities word for word. Um, I figured that despite the fact that he has high strength and dexterity in old game, I figured dexterity would be paramount for 5th edition since, you know, you can use dexterity for a lot of melee combat weapons in this game. Yeah, one of the very few uh, moments where I have a bard's uh, charisma not be their highest stat, but I kept that, that one high regardless. A little strength for some extra martial backup just in case. Which honestly feels kind of wasted if I'm going to be honest with you, but whatever. It can be helpful when jumping and such, so I guess it's not wasted after all. And his constitution being as low as it was, yeah, that worked for me. And then finally for his appearance, I decided to just go ahead and go as close to um, his original look as possible. Since even without mods, there are some human-esque uh, skin tones you can pick out uh, for tieflings, which kind of tells me that there might be those uh, few out there that aren't, you know, red-skinned. But all the same, and of course he has his blue hair. I have a little bit of trouble picking out the style, something fairly long. Um, but I noticed that there are a couple of uh, braids eh, along the sides of his face, so that kind of led to this decision right here. Uh, since he didn't have horns in the last game, honestly, I'm, I'm leaving those up to you. Um, you know, um, and then he also has some body art, which... I, again, well, it's very it's very little body art. There's not really a lot of it in the game. Um, in fact, what I'm seeing right here, these little birds, check it out. They look like birds. You know what? This is perfect. This is fine. <laughs> Let's, yeah, the, the, that's his face art. That works. <laughs> this game knows me so well. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that, uh, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, if you have any, um, request for the next character, just hit me up and I'll do that one uh, earlier in the list. And uh, in the meantime, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and farewell.